Well, Joe, are you sure you can handle a messed up game like this? I mean, it's not exactly golf, you know? Donald, let's not forget that you're the expert when it comes to bankruptcy. So maybe you'll feel right at home in this messed up shit show. Donald, you talk a big fucking game, but I've been in politics longer than you've been tweeting. Let's see if you can keep up with a seasoned pro. You guys have any idea what the hell is going on in this game? Well, Donald, this game takes place in a pretty fucked up universe and follows the story of Andy and Laylee, two teenagers who each have a psychological disorder or who are totally fucked up. It's like a twisted roller coaster ride through their messed up minds. That's right, Joe. It's a journey into the depths of their psyches where reality blurs with the surreal. Just like politics, it's all about navigating the unpredictable. Joe, it's your turn to play this shit show of a game. Finish it or I swear I'll fire you. Why the hell can't I see my mouse cursor on the screen? Joe, you've always been a bit slow, haven't you? These games are keyboard only, not point and click crap. Yeah, Joe, it's not that complicated. You're in a world full of messed up teenagers, not a bingo night at the nursing home. Hey, I might not be a tech genius, but I've been around the block a few damn times. Don't sweat it, Joe. We'll walk you through this shit. Just remember, these games are all about those keyboard shortcuts. Get ready to use those fingers, buddy. Let's get this show on the road, Joe. We've got a twisted universe to conquer, and I'm not leaving until we kick some virtual ass. All right, I'll give it a shot, even without my damn mouse. Very well, let's fuck some teen ass. What? What? Damn it, Laylee, why'd you stop cooking? What the hell is going on? We're starving here. Hold on, guys, something's not right. It looks like some bastard named Warden has blocked the door for no reason. Seriously, Warden, you're blocking our way to food? What's wrong with you? This is a nightmare. I didn't come here to starve. Laylee, keep cooking. Donald, you fat piece of shit, you are not even in the game. Plus, I know that you still have some cheeseburger of your previous order. Joe, Donald, this place is a dump. It's like someone took a dump on the floor and had a blast spreading it everywhere. Oh, this is nasty. Let's just get out of here and deal with this warden later. I need a shower just looking at this place. Can you believe it, Joe? Laylee and Andy are eating those damn canned tomatoes. It's like they have cans of tomatoes cut out of cans on this crazy planet. Well, Donald, at least you and Barack get to enjoy some goddamn delicious cheeseburgers while you watch my gameplay. Donald, you got to admit, nothing beats a good old cheeseburger. Let's savor it while we witness Joe's culinary shit show. You know, Joe, I've always said a cheeseburger is a symbol of freedom, and here you are stuck with canned tomatoes. Fucking sad. Donald, you're such a fat ass. I bet you'd eat gold flake cheeseburgers if they were on the menu. Well, we might as well enjoy our goddamn burgers while we watch Joe's tomato tasting adventure. It's a real culinary fucking train wreck. Joe, you can't make America great again on canned tomatoes. It takes a cheeseburger to do that. Looks like he's doing some kind of fucking ritual. Probably got tired of eating those goddamn tomatoes all the time, too. Donald, for the love of all things holy, shut the fuck up. We don't want him to hear us and join in on this batshit craziness. Keep your trap closed. Joe's got a point, Donald. Let's just fucking focus on the game and pretend we didn't see anything. That guy's probably crazier than this godforsaken gameplay. And we've got our hands full dealing with this messed up virtual world. All right, all right, I'll zip it. But seriously, guys, this place gets weirder by the minute. I'm just trying to make sense of it all. Well, we're in for one hell of a ride, that's for sure. Let's just hope we survive this game and get back to our cheeseburgers in one piece. You know, looking at Laylee's situation, I can't help but feel for her. It's not easy having to deal with a brother who can't even turn on the TV by pressing the on button, let alone find batteries. Joe, you've always been the empathetic one, but seriously, this game is a hot mess, and I'm just here for the laughs and the cheeseburgers. Hey, have you guys noticed how filthy this apartment is? I can't tell if it's just the graphic style of the game or if someone forgot to clean up after themselves. It's like a damn dump in here. Joe, you might be onto something. This place looks like it hasn't seen a broom in years. Maybe the game designers were going for a realistic dirt style, but it's taking realism to a whole new level. I'm not sure if it's the game's graphic style or if they just have terrible housekeeping skills. Either way, it's not exactly inviting. Well, I hope Laylee and her anorexic brother or whoever the hell they are aren't responsible for this mess. 
Otherwise, they've got more problems than just finding batteries. Joe, this whole game is a bizarre combination of messed up graphics and bizarre scenarios. What the fuck did you expect? Hey guys, do you remember that sentence from the game? And to our friends in quarantine, thank you for keeping your disgusting, parasite-infested bodies far, far away from me. Yeah, I remember that. It's not just about being in quarantine. It's about being in quarantine because of some contamination. And the people supposed to take care of us sound like a bunch of assholes. It seems like we're in quite the predicament here. Quarantined, dealing with a contamination, and stuck in a game with some seriously messed up characters. Just another day in this digital nightmare, I guess. Well, let's stick together and find a way out of this mess. If those supposed caretakers won't help us, we'll have to rely on our wits and teamwork to get through this. Teamwork, Joe? Let's be real, there's no damn teamwork in this game. The only thing we can do is insult you and watch your gameplay. Donald's got a point, Joe. Teamwork or not, we're in this together. Insults and all, we'll figure it out as we go. Well, I guess that's our unique brand of teamwork then. Let's insult our way through this game and hope for the best. What a bunch of piece of shit. The people on the screen and that warden guy, they're lying their asses off. They're saying they've delivered food to all the folks in quarantine, but Andy and Laylee didn't get jack shit. They can't even manage a simple food delivery in this batshit crazy place? What a bunch of incompetent assholes. We've got to get to the bottom of this bullshit. If they're messing with us and depriving innocent folks of their grub, they're gonna regret it. You're damn right, Barack. We can't trust a word coming from those fuckers. We'll have to take matters into our own hands and make sure Andy and Laylee get a decent meal in this fucked up game. Joe, you're our gameplay guru. Lead the way and let's make sure those two hungry piece of shit get their fucking fill. Hold the fuck up. Did Laylee just suggest getting knocked up to butter up the warden? That's one hell of a ballsy move for this insane game. Damn, that's some next level shit even for a game like this. She's really going all in. We need to keep an eye on her. This game is seriously screwing with people's heads and we can't let it push her to pull some crazy ass stunts. What the heck is that? Did the neighbor actually manage to summon a tiny demon? Well, that's not what I was expecting. It looks more like a floating meatball with creepy red eyes. This is bizarre, even for a messed up game. It's like a weird sci-fi horror flick. Looks like guy who summoned the demon just got schooled by it. Probably because he didn't have anything worthwhile to offer and it felt bad about it. Honestly, he probably got what he deserved. Messing around with demonic invocations is a load of nonsense. There's already enough crap in the world. Let's remember to stay cautious and not mess with things we don't understand. This game is already crazy enough without adding meatball demons to the mix. Well, isn't this just a cherry on top of our messed up Sunday? A meatball demon with a side of chaos? Hey, maybe we can negotiate with the meatball. Offer it some spaghetti, you know? Get on its good side. Donald, I think the meatball might be more interested in your hair. It looks like a cousin of yours. I can't believe this shit, but Laylee and that other teenager are talking about cannibalism. They're discussing eating the poor bastard who just got killed by the demon. Seriously, what the fuck is wrong with this game? Barack, I've seen some crazy stuff in my time, but this takes the goddamn cake. Cannibalism? This game is a real motherfucker. And those kids are fuck up. Joe, launch a nuke of them. This shit has gone way off the deep end. I knew it was messed up, but this is on a whole new level. Well, folks, it seems like we've stumbled into a real circus of the bazaar. Andy and Laylee, you two make quite the sideshow act. Joe, you're absolutely right. It's like watching a car crash in slow motion, except with more demons and cannibalism. As much as I'd love to stay and chat about the culinary preferences of fictional teenagers, we should focus on finding a way to handle this insanity. Don't worry, Barack. We've faced plenty of situations in our lives, and we always come out on top. We've got this. So we're at this point in the game. Laylee has to choose which arm to cut off from the deceased man, left or right. This is getting really dark. This is deeply disturbing. It's one thing to confront fictional horror, but this scenario is pushing some serious boundaries. What kind of messed up game is this? Cannibalism? That's not strategy. That's just sick. Who plays this stuff? It's about survival, I guess. But there's a line between making tough choices and losing your humanity. Even in a game, this feels wrong. 
Exactly. It's important to remember it's just a game, but it's also a reflection of the extremes people might go to. Still, this is a little too extreme for my taste. I've seen a lot of things, but this takes the cake. And these characters, Laylee and Andy, they're in such a desperate situation, it's almost understandable. Almost. Laylee's a psycho, right? You'd think she'd have a different approach to this. But then again, extreme situations can change people. And Andy, he's protective but unstable. It's a volatile mix in a scenario like this. Makes you think about what you'd do in their shoes. I wouldn't be in their shoes, that's the point. There's got to be a better way to handle this, even in a game. This is beyond survival, it's just gruesome. I think the game is trying to challenge the players, make them think about hard choices. But yeah, I agree, it's a bit too much. It's a reminder of how important our choices are, even in the most desperate times. But in a game, you have to wonder where the line is drawn. Well, I say we make a different choice. There's got to be another way out of this. Let's see what else we can do. I'm not into this cannibalism plot. Bro, what the fuck is this music? This is not Ampa Loompa. Look at that. Laylee doesn't even flinch at this. She's smiling. This game's characters are something else. She's cold. Smiling in a situation like this, that's not just tough, that's twisted. And her brother Andy, he's just following along. What a simp. Andy seems so easily swayed. You can tell he's struggling with this, but he's not standing up to it. It's like he's lost in his sister's shadow. It's a disturbing dynamic. Laylee's lack of empathy and Andy's susceptibility. It paints a dark picture of how people might adapt to extreme circumstances. Adapt? More like descend into madness. This isn't adaptation, it's a complete breakdown of moral boundaries. This family's got serious issues. It's a tough watch. You'd hope in a real situation people would hold on to their humanity a bit more tightly. The game is pushing the envelope on psychological horror. It's not just about physical survival, it's a deep dive into the psyche of these characters. It's too deep for me. There's got to be a line somewhere. This isn't entertainment, it's a horror show. In a way, it's a reflection. How far can people be pushed before they break? But I agree, it's unsettling how this game portrays that breaking point. It raises questions, not just about the game's characters, but about the nature of humanity under pressure. Still, this level of darkness isn't for everyone. Can you believe this? Laylee's frying up the meat like it's just another barbecue. What kind of crazy person does that? And this, folks, is why I never dated a goth girlfriend. You never know when they'll take things a step too far. I don't know if I'm fucked up or this game is, but damn, I can't stop watching this madness. Seriously, Donald? Munching on a burger while watching this horror show? That's some twisted multitasking. It's surreal, isn't it? Eating while watching a scene straight out of a horror movie? Kind of adds a layer of messed up reality to it. Hey, this burger is the only sane thing keeping me anchored right now. This game's a mind fuck. Anchored? More like bizarrely juxtaposed. You're half in this nightmare and half in a fast food ad. Look at this beta male getting bossed around by his little sister to eat human meat. Talk about a twisted family dynamic. Beta male? More like a total pushover. This guy needs to man up, not just follow along with this cannibalism crap. It's more than just being a pushover. It shows how people can be manipulated under pressure, especially in desperate situations. laylee has been off her rocker since she was a kid, and poor Andy didn't stand a chance with a sister like that. Seriously, even my kid not that fuck up. This is like watching a twisted episode of South Park. Laylee's like a pint-sized Cartman, no morals whatsoever. It's disturbing, but telling. Shows how these patterns of manipulation and control started early on. Andy was doomed from the start. Doomed is right. He's been under her thumb since they were kids. It's like she's been training him to be her puppet all along. Jesus, Laylee's locked a little girl in a trunk now? This game is getting darker by the second. Seriously, I feel bad for the girl inside the box, victim of the situation. And look at her, crying crocodile tears to manipulate her brother. She's like a villain straight out of a horror movie. It's a classic manipulation tactic. Guilt tripping Andy by playing the victim. She's been pulling his strings from the start. Andy's hesitating, but you can see he's torn. It's like he knows it's wrong, but can't bring himself to stand up to his sister. Stand up to her? He's been her puppet for so long, I doubt he even knows how to say no to her anymore. 
I think we should nuke those kids. It's a sad reflection of their relationship. Andy's been conditioned to respond to her manipulation even when it's blatantly wrong. Conditioned is right. It's like he's been brainwashed into thinking her needs always come first, no matter how twisted. I mean, not totally, but you guys understand, I guess. Twisted doesn't even start to cover it. Locking up a little girl and then playing the victim? That's next level messed up. Seriously, I won't even get shocked those two start fucking. Do you guys know something that I don't know or what is your problem?